Why are Hollywood writers going on strike? Welcome back to Nerdist News. I'm Dan Casey, and today we're taking a break from dissecting pop culture to talk about the most important thing happening in the world of entertainment right now, the writer's strike. Now, as you may have heard, members of the Writers Guild of America, the labor union that represents some 11,500 writers of film and television, are officially on strike as of 12.01 a.m. on Tuesday morning. This is the first writer's strike in 15 years, and it comes after six weeks of protracted negotiations with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. More specifically, the AMPTP represented major studios and streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, NBC Universal, Paramount, and Sony. In a statement to its members, the WGA wrote, Here's what all writers know. The companies have broken this business. They've taken so much from the very people, the writers, who have made them wealthy. But what they cannot take from us is each other, our solidarity, our mutual commitment to save ourselves, and this profession that we love. We had hoped to do this through reasonable conversation. Now we will do it through struggle. For the sake of our present and our future, we've been given no other choice. And perhaps writer Eric Galindo put it the best. If you're confused about the writer's strike, it's super basic. The studios want the option of having WGA writers to work for free or without an agreed upon weekly salary or even a day rate. And we actually want to get paid fairly for our work. While much of Hollywood deal-making is obfuscated and takes place behind closed doors, the WGA have been incredibly transparent about the proposals for which they're negotiating. As streaming networks have flourished, studios have devised new ways to devalue writing across all mediums by paying writers less and less. In a March 2023 memo titled Writers Are Not Keeping Up, the WGA explained their position. The companies have used the transition to streaming to cut writer pay and separate writing from production, worsening working conditions for series writers at all levels. On TV staffs, more writers are working at minimum regardless of experience, often for fewer weeks or in many rooms, while showrunners are left without a writing staff to complete the season. And while series budgets have soared over the past decade, median writer-producer pay has fallen. Now, between layoffs, shrinking salaries, the mothballing of finished products for lucrative tax write-downs, and the general contraction of the industry, there are fewer opportunities for writers to actually make a living at their chosen trade. Per the WGA, median writer-producer pay has declined 4% over the last decade. Adjusted for inflation, that's a whopping 23% decrease. This devaluation has taken on a new dimension in the age of streaming. Residuals have long been one of the primary ways through which writers can make a sustainable income. Residuals, for those who don't know, are ongoing payments for writers that are generated as reruns of shows and movies air on cable, in syndication, on DVD and Blu-ray, or airing on other digital platforms. And the data, if you look at it, can be a bit confusing at a glance, because according to Deadline, the WGA West's annual report in 2022 revealed that residuals actually increased by 48.2% from 2011 to 2021. They went from $333 million to $493.6 million, but this is because more projects are being made across the board to keep up with the proliferation of streaming networks. On an actual per-project basis, residuals are down significantly. According to Fortune, another major factor in this decline in residual pay is that so many studios and streamers are more likely to order a 10-episode season than the 22-episode season that was the standard when broadcasters dominated the medium. Now, back in 2022, writer Kira Jones very succinctly explained this discrepancy on Twitter. In case y'all are wondering why a WGA strike may be impending, my first residual check for the broadcast show I wrote on was $12,000. I just got my first residual check for my streaming show, $4. Now, the notion that Hollywood writers are all overpaid, sitting on Scrooge McDucky and piles of gold coins, is an overblown fiction. Speaking with The New Yorker, writer Alex O'Keefe revealed that despite being a staff writer on FX's critically acclaimed comedy The Bear, he was living in a tiny Brooklyn apartment with no heat. And when his space heater blew out the power, he would have to go to a public library to work instead. When his show won the WGA award for a comedy series, he actually had a negative bank account and had to wear a bow tie he purchased on credit. Now, to put things in even starker context here, eight executives, just eight executives at major Hollywood studios, made a combined $773 million last year in annual salary. That's just eight people who have zero qualms about banishing your favorite shows to the nether realm and laying off thousands of workers while taking outsized compensation packages themselves. 
Now, according to the WGA's list of proposals, their collected proposals would gain writers approximately $429 million per year. That's less than 3% of Hollywood's annual profits, and a staggering $344 million less than is paid to those eight individuals. According to the DSALA, Ari Emanuel and David Zaslav could have footed the bill by themselves last year and still walked away with $63 million salaries each. Each! What the AMPTP came back with to the WGA amounts to a paltry $86 million increase across the board, which is frankly insulting to all of the hardworking writers negotiating in good faith. Now, the issue of residuals aside, one of the most pertinent proposals in these negotiations is very relevant to the current zeitgeist. It is the section on artificial intelligence, specifically the ways in which studios can use AI to write scripts for TV and film. The WGA's proposal seeks to regulate the use of artificial intelligence on projects covered by their minimum basic agreement. They seek to prohibit AI from writing or rewriting literary material, AI-generated content can't be used as source material, and material covered by the MBA cannot be used to train AI. And this is all to say nothing of the fact that existing programs like ChatGPT can't write their way out of a virtual paper bag, especially when it comes to fiction. The AMPTP, though, flatly rejected their proposal. Instead, they offered annual meetings to discuss advancements in technology. That's kind of like offering a band-aid after having a limb severed by a robot. So what would the effect actually be on Hollywood's biggest bottom line, AKA their wallet? Well, it'll be significant if it's anything like the previous writer's strike in 2007. According to the Associated Press, the 2007 writer's strike, which lasted 100 days, cost California's economy an estimated $2 billion. CNN noted that the AMPTP estimates there could be as many as 20,000 people working on as many as 600 productions who could be out of work if the strike shuts down production. And you might also be wondering, how will this affect viewers at home? Well, you may first notice a ripple effect across late night shows. In a WGA memo obtained by the Los Angeles Times, they noted immediately new episodes of late night shows, including Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Real Time with Bill Maher, Late Night with Seth Meyers, Saturday Night Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, and others would cease. There will also be a knock-on effect for the streaming services of the legacy media companies, which rely on new broadcast episodes to populate their services. And despite studios stockpiling scripts to try and produce a backlog of content, this could also lead to delays in production on some of your favorite shows, especially ones that are currently in production on upcoming seasons like House of the Dragon and Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. So things are looking pretty dire, but worst of all, this time we don't have Conan O'Brien in his spinning wedding ring to keep us company. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's a brief overview of the writer's strike. Godspeed and solidarity to everyone out there who's picketing for fair wages. Thank you for all the amazing stories you tell, and hopefully you receive the wages and compensation that you so richly deserve. Now, if you live in Los Angeles or New York City, please consider honking loudly in support of those on strike. Join the picket lines yourselves. And whatever you do, don't cross the picket lines, because nobody likes a scab, and I do mean nobody. As always, though, for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.